Welcome back to our channel. We're Chloe and Matthew, two wine-loving foodies who have set out to explore the world one bite, sip or slurp at a time. In this series, we're visiting every iconic wine region in Australia to get a lowdown on the juice, the people and what makes it special. And we're back guys for round two of the Big Bad Barossa. Today we're going to focus on some of the smaller guys, the lesser known or new startups. Join us for the adventure. Ford Supply Company has a pretty unique goal throughout their many business lines to give everyone the opportunity to think and act more sustainably by creating a movement of people helping themselves and the world around them. Scotty and Justin have done an outstanding job with this ambitious goal. Wow. The block down here that we're looking at right now is our baby block. So we planted up Grenache, Canyon and Monte Cristiano. And then we'll plant up some Bouchon Tempranillo on the hill face there. So a bit like the Tinker style. Yeah. It's a bit of a lineup. So we want to showcase how we can use community more sustainably and how we give back to the community. So yeah. we've hired over 10,000 hours of homelessness through our catering company and um, wine growing company. We've got three school based community gardens, but we've got two books in season. And then the build side, our big one, we've just started building little tiny houses for um, our homeless community. What we really want to do with this one is get some lovely sort of tropical pineapple sort of flavours through it. So it's like it's more midweek than like heavyweight showing it. Come on. Come on. Up. Ah, good boy. You're yeah, right, we're all here, yep. Everyone's here, it's all good, mate. <laughs> Just a little cruise through the vineyard down to the river. And he's in the water. Yep. It's like I see him. <laughs> Rex, you're not going to catch it. Come here. Yeah, so that is from the block right there. So that's uh, that's where it all started. That's some build. <laughs> Rexy is having a time of his life. <laughs> Part of this charming property is the old cottage above us that was converted into an Airbnb and this special little cellar below that we're in now. We want one of these. I'm looking for the same as the cottage as well. Well then she's going to Love just coming through those regions, yeah. love the light up fun thing. Set's a bit later here too, so mine's the, the frost risks a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, no Will Robinson. Just a great. Puppy is going nuts. Maybe time to hit a dog park. Awesome. Uh, we've been here since we moved in halfway through the 2018. I can't the wolf is in there, the Rock of Wisdom is the third child and amazing product of the Barossa Valley natives Pete, the Rock, and Sophie, the Wisdom. Their focus is on minimal intervention winemaking and they craft a wine that you're meant to drink now and enjoy. These are some killer wines that are made by some kick ass people. They used to work at Penfolds. Yes! Wow! The only place that's paid me to be a full-time journeyman bona fide wine making was Penfold. <laughs> oh, it's pretty interesting. I only like tasting through four to six hundred wines before ten o'clock in the morning every day. Drinking, wow. Which is pretty nice. That's the door. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did you change your labels? Uh, other ones? We have. We've yeah. done like a label change. Cool. Um, we got a bit excited because I looked at the original labels and went, why did we go so conservative? At the time, it seemed like a good idea. Why well, do you want a classic and longevity at that stage? Yeah. Uh, well, it, didn't, it didn't really fit the personality or the no. personality of the brand. Yeah. We're, we're not exactly the most conservative people. Yeah, we sat there with our sofas actually out with the graphic designer this morning, Eric, which is one of our good mates. Yeah. This is the idea that came in on it. I want this floating rock with a big vine around it hanging off and like. It's gotta be crazy neon colours. Can you share that Okay. <laughs> Feeling alright? Yeah, it's gonna be really cool, but it needs this big wine wrap around it. Why am I? Because great, okay, it means rock, so it needs wisdom, and the vine is the wisdom because it's nature and caring. And... 
on the rock because I'm the stubborn idiot that needs Sophie to point out what's happening in the <laughs> That's what we did. This really is boutique and family driven. Kids are running around the cellar and we're using old buckets as spittoons. This is the fun kind of wine tasting. So this block, uh, it's one of the, another old vine vineyard. This is another one planted in the 70s. Uh, this one's kind of smack bang in the middle of the valley floor. So, oh, that, How did you get into industry then? I, I grew up. So you just, just what happened? Yeah, well, I finished high school and went, cool, I'll go do natural resource management. Yeah, I should probably take a year off and go do a vintage. Yeah. If I can ever get these two winemakers to stop swapping stories, maybe we can get back to tasting some wine. Don't look at me! <laughs> Classic winemaker, look at me, I'm bloody Spider-Man. Here we go. So this one is the Shiraz Marsan Kofamin. It's the same vineyard as Shiraz uh, and same type of oak. The Lost Wolf label has been around a while on and off. We'll let Wolf tell you his philosophy. Oh, look at that one. It's a 17 Shiraz. Mm -hmm. <coughs> my, uh, my wife's been a tad older. Yep. I've been for a little while. So, I haven't even got around to putting the 18 out yet. Just so that uh, we're all such in a hurry in the industry. I made a full fried semi-on because I can. Yep. And I wanted to. Yep. Just to... Um, it's really nice. Uh, just to play with the whiskey barrels that I've got access to. My hand is always taking a pop and take. Yep. Take new ex Australian whiskey barrels. Yep. Throw some fortified in there. Beautiful. Yeah, that's why we get those characteristics. Yeah. So, so like, this is how he's making his labels. That is epic. So basically, it's a one of a better word, it's a windmill press. Mm-hmm. So push it in, it's down. You just want to pour it out of the bottle because it's pretty. 2012 Torbrick run rig decanted in a sample pitcher. This is a winemaker party, alright. David Franz, the son of Peter Lemon, is doing some fun stuff with his private label and winery. I'm gonna go drink wine in there. Do you wanna come with me? I like this place already. <laughs> they gave us cider. <laughs> that's pretty good too. And a hangover, that's like perfect. Yeah. Well, you hungover? Oh. Just a little dusty. Did you already order our food? You selected it without any help? No guidance? These wines had a delicious softness and drinkability. They pair beautifully with the upcoming charcuterie board. The Brazil is pretty legit, guys. Really? Yeah. Coming from a <laughs> when did you last do that? pretty much Italian. <laughs> This winery was recommended to us multiple times and it didn't disappoint. Definitely not your expected or typical style of Barossa wines. The Barossa Valley just felt incredible to us. The food, the wine and the people. But we're not done here yet. Next up is the Eden Valley. Join us as we explore the cooler climate neighbour next door to the Barossa Valley. We'll seek out some hidden gems hiding just over the hill. Like and subscribe below so you can join us again.